one of your exes sent me a message. Did you send her naked pictures of me? If there is a bring up, I'm not gonna marry you. Just forget it. You, you. Your family is trash. You're a piece of you. I'm gonna go and my ex right there. I'm just visualizing him coming, us being together. My name is Ashley. Yes, I'm a black Ashley. We're unicorns. I'm 32 years old and I'm from Rochester, New York. Wait, wait for mama. I love to dance. I love to learn things. I'm a poet and um, I am a witch. I'm a tarot reader, I'm an astrologer, I specialize in shadow work. I think people are still very much afraid of the word witch. Because we've been conditioned to believe that a witch is somebody with like a crooked nose looking into their crystal ball, like throwing hexes on people. That's not anything that I do. Place your hands on your heart. Okay. Feet planted firmly on the ground. Ready to receive divine wisdom from our spirit guides. One more deep breath in, filling the belly up with air. And let it all go. You can just shake it out and get all nice and loose. I love it, I love it, I love it. Let's pull some cards. My family was religious growing up, but I'm like the crazy one, the rebellious one. And I began to dabble into the occult. The magician is coming in upside down next to the Ten of Swords upside down. There's some limiting beliefs. Yes, there is. I'm gonna get a little deep with you, okay? This little twinge of doubt, this isn't gonna work. Childhood trauma. My spirituality guides every single part of my life. When I was in my undergrad, I had a dream. I was literally like in the woods, in the jungle, and I was like, like working with the earth somehow it prompted me to talk to my biology teacher. And she's like, we're going to Ecuador in December. And I was like, sign me up. And then I went. I met Manuel that very first year. Siempre estás en mi pensamiento, en mi mente y en mi corazón. Te amo mucho, 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 mi amor. Te amo, te amo. Ya es todo. My fiance's name is Manuel. He's 35 years old, and he's a construction worker from Puyo, Ecuador. I met Manuel on New Year's Eve over 10 years ago. Manuel came up to me and asked me to dance. Oh my goodness, he has this beautiful dark skin. It's like a mixture of peanut butter and cinnamon and this like luscious black hair that just bounces and is so full. <laughs> We were like inseparable after that. And then we became engaged after like a week, I think. It was passion, getting caught up in the moment, being young and in love, young, dumb, full of I think all of that came back home. We tried to have a long distance relationship, but it didn't last. Ooh, this is beautiful. Wow. He might not wear these, and I want him to wear it. Manuel and I spent about seven years apart or so, give or take. I had gotten out of a long-term relationship. Like, I feel like everybody can relate to this. When you get out of a relationship, the exes come out of the woodwork, even if you haven't announced it. That's literally what happened. I was a week out of my long-term relationship and Manuel out of nowhere. Hola. And I'm like, oh my God, this dude. Vamos, yo estaba llamando para saludarte y decirte mucho que te extraño. Manuel's kind of a boy, I'll own that. And you know, in his 20s, he was more of a boy than he is now. 
But Manuel was always my what if man. So I bought a ticket to go see him in September of 2020, hopping my happy ass on a plane across the world. <laughs> he got me from the airport. We went straight to the Airbnb and we quarantined together. And I'm sitting in the bed and he like takes out the box and he was like, Okay, so like, here's the ring. Like, are, are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna marry me? And I was like, are you sure? He's like, are you sure? I'm like, I think I'm sure he lives. I think I'm sure too. And then I did it. <laughs> so, yeah. Dragon's blood in Cyprus, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. My partner is traveling very far away for the first time ever, hence protection work. Yes, yes. Initially, he didn't want to go to America, but he recognized that it's better for him to come here because he can get work pretty easily doing construction. So we applied for the K-1 visa. We got it! And Manuel is finally scheduled to arrive tomorrow. I am so excited about it. I'm also hella nervous about Manuel coming here and being around my witchy practice and being able to take it all in. Manuel would prefer me to be a Catholic woman. A thousand million, billion percent, yes. <laughs> Any special occasion going on that we got all this? We got some love, we I, got some yes. protection. Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, my partner is coming here to live. <gasps> Tomorrow. No, really? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow? From where? Ecuador. Ecuador, mm -hmm. wow. He's never been on a plane. He's never left his country. Wow. I am petrified of him taking this trip. Manuel's never been outside of Ecuador. He's traveling from Guayaquil to Quito, from Quito to Miami, from Miami up to Rochester never left his country before or been on a plane, and he doesn't speak English. And then on top of that, his visa expires tomorrow. If he's not on the plane, what happens then? Literally, like, I'm not sure if he's gonna be there or not be there when we get to the airport. All the thoughts are running through my head. Yeah! <laughs> my name is Yasmin, I'm 36 years old, and I live in Panama. But in just a few days, I'll be moving to the United States to be with my amazing fiance, Gino. So, tonight, my friends are picking me up because it's my bachelor party. It's very sad to think that they are not gonna be able to make it to my wedding. And why not to have a party? Gino and I met online three years ago. He was very nerdy, and I found that kind of cute because I don't like um, traditional good-looking guys because I'm a super jealous person. But when I saw his pictures, he has like the belly fat, the flamingo legs, the sharky nose, the non-existent lips. It's kind of my thing. I mean, that's, those are the things that I like from him. I'm being just honest. I told him that, and he was laughing. My baby's so happy. It's handsome. always a beautiful day when I'm with Jasmine. Oh. We applied for the K-1 visa one year and a half ago, and they gave me a date for the interview. And when I made it to the embassy, they just told me, Oh, we're sorry, but there is something wrong with the visa at this moment, and we will have to reschedule your interview. <sighs> it was devastating. But I was given a second chance, and it took the officer less than 10 minutes after seeing me, because I'm super cute. How can you say no to me, right? And. He was like, congratulations, you're going to America. Your visa has been approved. That means that I'm gonna marry Gino. I'm gonna be with him day and night, 24 seven. <laughs> That's <a> scary, <laughs> but it makes me so happy. I'm getting out of here.
I'm Gino, and I'm from Michigan. And today is my last day of work. Oops. Oh, jeez. I've been working in automotive engineering for probably like 30 years. I told my boss, you know, that I need to take a leave of absence from my work for a while, and I'm not planning to come back for possibly a year-ish or so. I want to make Jasmine a priority. I want to make sure she gets on her feet in Michigan, get all these things that she's going to need, like a social security number, driver's license, because I'm really worried, like, if she's not able to adapt to it, is she going to go back to Panama and that's it? That would suck. Adios. Jasmine and I have been together for three years now. And I love Jasmine. I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world. But our relationship is a roller coaster. It's up and down, up and down, and that's on a daily basis. One of your exes sent me a message. Did you send her naked pictures of me? If there is a prenup, I'm not gonna marry you. Just forget it. you. You. Your family is trash. You're a piece of you. I'm gonna go and my ex. Right that there. How to me? What don't Jasmine and I fight about? I mean, we fight about my past exes, my past girlfriends, the food I eat, finances, my family and stuff. Unnecessary cosmetic procedures, I believe. She doesn't like all the pop I drink. I don't like her talking about her exes. She shouldn't be talking about her exes, but uh, what keeps us coming back together is we have such a strong bond and, and a you know, good connection that when I believe there's no hope or think there's no hope, Somehow, we come back together. It's, it's amazing. That's actually nice. My name is Sophie, I'm 23 years old, and I live in London, England. For work, I do fashion modeling and content creating, just like social media things so I don't have to like stay in one place. I can kind of just like go wherever. And also I get free clothes, so that's nice. <laughs> I don't like green, but like if this was like bright yellow, I'd like it. Like I like standing out stuff. I like to go out, I like to dance, be with friends, have a good time. I was clubbing at 12 in America. I'm sure that looks absolutely crazy. But in Europe, if you look old enough, you can go to the clubs, like they don't really care. My family is wealthy, like, it, basically my granddad's like a really hardworking man. I don't really ask about what he does, I just know he made a lot of money. So like, that's why we always just lived, you know, in nice houses, I went to private school, I've traveled a lot of places, so like, I'm really lucky for that. But I also had a lot of really tough experiences in life. I'm actually mixed race, so my dad is black and my mom is white. I was raised in Spain where there wasn't any black people, so um, I was like the only mixed kid or a black kid in the whole school. And as a kid, I was bullied. I didn't really have any friends and I just struggled to fit in. But like, even though I went through a lot of difficult things, I'm still thankful for them because those experiences led me to the person I am today and also led me to the love of my life, Rob. You got supernatural power. Before I met Rob, I was following like a bunch of Instagram pages for like cute mixed race guys. <laughs> and then I saw Rob on there. He was actually the only guy from that page that I followed just because like, I thought he was so cute. I wouldn't tell him that though, he'd get a massive head. <laughs> Here we go, how to get, how to get the pump we need. I'm Rob, I'm 32 years old, and I live in Los Angeles. Two days until you got your wifey in town, looking at you like, what you been doing? You been working out? <laughs> I do care about looks. 
I care about both looks and personality, but I care about looks a lot too. I feel like I'm a good looking guy, so people can kiss my ass on me being shallow and wanting a good looking girl, but I'm gonna keep it real. I wanted to find and Sophie is the hottest person I've been with, and that's, that's what I've been looking for. I'm kind of a jack of all trades, and one of my jobs was being a model. So I would get a lot of women who would reach out to me on social media. Um, usually I would just ignore them. But when Sophie followed me, I was like, oh, <laughs> She's stunning, who is she? Is she even real? Like, she followed me? One of the first things I said to her was, if I had a girl like you, I could stop looking. And then sparked a conversation with her and shot my shot, and I must have made that shot. I don't know, Rob's, I guess, not smooth. I'm not even gonna call him smooth, but like he, he, he said all the right things to me. <laughs> I kind of texted him back and entertained it a bit. And then literally after the first day, he FaceTimed me. That was very bold, and it, I don't know if it's an American thing or what, but like, you don't just FaceTime them after they reply to you and you don't know them. I accepted the call and I was like, hello, <laughs> like, why are you calling me? And he was like, oh, I just want to see if you're real. And I was like, yeah, I'm real. And I, at first I was a bit weirded out, but then I was like, oh, he's very confident just to do that. I love you, baby. That FaceTime lasted eight hours. On, on FaceTime, like, what do you even talk about for some for eight hours? But we was just talking nonstop. There was never any silences. Even though we were from opposite sides of the world, and I know I was raised in a nice area and he was raised in a rough area, but even with that, we've had very similar childhood experiences in terms of like, you know, racism stuff, and he never fit in with anyone, and he was bullied as well. Even though we've been like brought up different ways, I think we both felt the connection that was just like, we haven't really found it anywhere else. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> We talked for like six months and then she came to Los Angeles and we went from having never met to living together for two months. Before I ever met Rob in real life, I'd only ever seen him on video call with his face like all up on the camera. So when I first saw him in person, he kind of just looked like he had a pee head. It looks like his head is like stuck on someone else's body. <laughs> One time. <laughs> At the end of it all, uh, we both felt like we, even in those two months, had, had gotten comfortable with each other. I'd heard about the K-1 visa before, and I just kind of put the idea in his head, like, this is a solution. And it was so awkward, because it was like, this basically means I'm proposing. <laughs> he was like, so, like, you're asking if we should get engaged? And I was like... Is it fine? It'll be worth it. She is due to show up here very soon. And this journey all comes down to this. That's very nerve wracking. We just gonna take these, you know, just in case. Last thing I want is some un uninvited guests. I ended up falling in love with someone who fell in love with me back, who has a completely different background. And sometimes it just seems like Sophie really can relate to me. She's lived at, in really nice places where she didn't have to pay the rent. She's even used to maids. It's far from the real world. Just throw one under there. She's still got spoiled rich girl tendencies. I'm gonna have to bring her a little bit down to earth. She's gonna have to learn that, you know, it ain't, it ain't, it's not that easy. And being with me is not gonna be a cakewalk. And at the end of the day, marrying Sophie needs to feel like it's gonna work. If I feel like it's just not gonna work, then I don't wanna do that to myself. And I don't wanna do it to her either. You ready? All right, here we go. Angle this a little bit, the other way. All right. How do I look? <gasps> work, Barbie. Okay. Gorgeous, okay. as usual. Okay. So I'm ready to do this. I'm Nicole. I'm from Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm 47, just an age. No mercy. Don't even bother. All right. Yes. I am a recording artist known as Nikki Exotica. 
as a music artist. I created Nikki Exotica as an alter ego. I wanted to have another persona and then come home and be normal again and be Nicole. The difference between Nicole and Nikki Exotica. Nikki, she's a little bit of a diva. Nicole, on the other hand, is a homebody. Ambitious, I'm home. Come here. Mm, I love the smell of fresh roses. To make ends meet, I am a hairstylist and makeup artist. And I am also a beauty consultant. So that means that anyone who wants advice on plastic surgery, I am the person to come to. I've done every plastic surgery procedure from head to toe. Nose, lips, jaw, chin, cheek implants, eye color change, breasts. You can't expect a woman to have all these curves naturally. <laughs> you know, when you look this certain way, you have a lot of people judging you. But when it's 80% of the world giving me positive feedback, I don't really care what the other 20% have to say. You know, if they can go kick rocks for all, I care. Because there was a time where I didn't love myself. You know, I was going through a really dark time. And now I'm finally like at a place where I'm happy and I love myself. And now I can actually invite love into my life. Yeah, so you go, give me that sex kit here. Got it? I think that's the shot. Oh, yes, we got it. Love it. I currently have a fiance named Justin. Justin is a personal trainer, and he's from Chisinau, Moldova. Today is your turn to send me a lot of photos and videos. I will waiting. What kind of guy do I go for, honestly? It's so ironic. It's everything Justin is. Tall, hot, obviously hung, and funny, and sweet, like genuine. I just want to be with my baby. So everybody wants to know how I met Justin. It is a long story, but here it goes. 17 years ago, I was not in love with Justin. I was not with Justin. We were not dating. I was in love with a Russian guy. We met at a nightclub in New York City. He was the love of my life. We we're supposed to get married. It's just that he was a bad boy, you know, and he would get in trouble and he committed a crime that he couldn't get away from and was deported from the United States. I was distraught. So I made a plan to fly out to Kishina, Moldova, where he got deported to, to find him. So I arrived to Kishina to reconnect and reunite with the love of my life, so I thought. <laughs> I never told him I was coming, and he opens the door. I'm trying to like give him a hug and a kiss, and he's being so cold with me. And I'm like, what is going on? And he says, Nikki, I live here with a girl. I'm like, excuse me? I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone. My ex played me so bad, so I made a profile on a friend's site in Moldova, and I found Justin. His name is Igor, but I just couldn't fathom the name Igor because it just reminds me of, you know, Frankenstein's assistant. So I renamed him Justin because when I first met him 17 years ago, he did look like Justin Timberlake. Hey. And it's stuck, and he loves the name too. And we spent the rest of my first trip in Moldova together. The first time he took me on a date, didn't even try to sleep with me. He was really sweet, gave me a kiss on my forehead, wah, and left. And I thought it was like so like, wow, like, you know, like that was, I've never been treated like that by any guy. And I started to fall for Justin. And then on my fourth visit to Moldova, Justin proposed to me. It was in a park, it was so romantic. You hear the birds chirping. Baby. Our first K-1 visa was approved, and we tried to give it a chance. But two weeks after Justin came the first time, we had some issues, and it just couldn't be worked on. 
So basically, you're going to Madola to see if he's the man for you. Uh, yes. Are you excited? I am excited, and we have some things to work on, so. What happened the first time? You never told me the full story. He was being lazy, and he wasn't helping me with the housewares, and he was, didn't want to help me cook and things like that, that I had to do everything. I had to work, I had to cook, clean, this, that. We got into a lot of heated arguments, and in one of those arguments, I said, yeah, well, I have a secret to tell you. I used to be a man, and he freaked. I was, I think I was about 20 years old. When I did my sex change operation, I like woke up and the first thing I did was had to touch myself down there and I'm like, oh my God, I did it. I'm a woman, I'm a woman. And I just feel like tears, you know, like coming down my eyes, I felt reborn again. At that time, I was living my life stealth. Stealth is basically where you don't tell people you the way you were born. I was very in the closet and very closed. You know, I didn't have any gay friends. I didn't have any trans friends. I kind of like wanted to have female friends only. It was just a thing for me. You know, I had to find myself and go through that journey. It had been about two years that Justin and I were dating. And when I did blurt that I used to be a man, he was in shock. Like, what? Like, you? how could you lie to me and do this? I traumatized him. And he went home and he was depressed for a really long time. And I feel bad about that. When was the last time you were together? In, in 2007. 15 years ago. Yes. Wow. And we're back together. Second chance of love. Justin and I kept in contact throughout the years. He had to go through things on his own and I had to go through things on my own. But years ago, we got into a conversation. He's like, how's everything? I was like, oh, I'm single, you know, but I'm in a much better place now. You know, I'm happy. I love myself. And he's like, yeah, good, good, good. You know, I'm single too. And I was like, you know, it'd be so funny if we actually gave us another chance. And he said, Nicole, you're crazy. And I was like, you know, don't you need a little crazy in your life? <laughs> hey, sweetie. You see, I have a new hairstyle. Hey, I just came to the gym. Three months after we first started speaking again, I arranged a trip to Mexico for us to connect physically, mentally, emotionally. Let me go back. While we were there, he did tell me that I'm the love of his life. And he proposed to me. And then I applied for the K-1 visa. A second time. <laughs> Are you ready to, to see him again? Are you ready to make sure this is it? Honestly, there is just some concerns that I have with our relationship. So before the K-1 visa gets approved, mm -hmm. we have some things to work on. So originally when I kept making advances to come to Chisinau, his answer was no, no, no. Trans people are not widely accepted in Moldova. I don't think gays are widely accepted in Moldova. People are beat up for being who they are. But this is our last time to apply for the K-1 visa because you can only try twice. So when I go to Moldova, I need to know, like, if it's going to work before he comes. There is no third chance with Justin. This is our last opportunity. And I hope we do keep building our happily ever after because it's very rare you're going to find a straight man to date a trans woman, especially publicly. Getting older, this is like my last chance at love.